Hello and welcome. So this is week two of the November Pick and Mix prompt in the Mixed Media Emporium Facebook group. And our challenge for this week is to either upcycle some boxes or packaging or upcycle a glass jar or glass bottle. Or of course you can do both. And I've got two little glass jars. These had salsa in them. And I'm going to use two different types of paints to upcycle them. The first lot I'm using are these Pabio Fantasy Moon paints. And these are supposed to work on any surface at all. And they have different effects like hammer defects, etc. So I've decided that I'm going to do kind of greens and blues for my jars. And I do it for both the jars that I do. And this is something where you could do any colour. So if you wanted to make it festive, you could do festive colours. I just had the notion of doing blues and mainly greens this week, although I do use one kind of neutral colour as well. So just going through them at the moment and looking to see which ones that I'm going to use. Now, any type of glass paint could be used for this, but I'll show you later how to use ordinary craft paints. I've looked out uh, a couple of brushes and what I'm basically going to do now is to stir the paints. They do separate and they do require to be stirred quite vigorously just to make sure that the paint is going to be applied okay. And all I'm going to do to begin with is to put on a first layer which will go on very thinly. Now it could be left at just one layer and then you could use something like a tea light in these. Uh, I would always use four candles because I'm never too sure about how such paints would react to an actual flame. But these paints are opaque if you apply two or three different coats and I'm going to apply a couple of coats in this instance. I let the paint overlap, the different paints overlap as I'm applying it and I also dry in between the layers. So I use a heat tool but I think possibly it would be better to let it dry naturally. Thank you. 
So I leave that one to the side just to dry a bit and I start the next one. So I'm, I've looked out some craft paints, mainly in kind of turquoise and blues. I had a feeling this might not work and actually the first layer stuck pretty well to the glass but as soon as I started to apply a second layer after that first layer had dried it actually started to pull the paint off. So in the end I took it all off, I just rubbed it off and I'll show you what I did next instead. So I decided to try some PVA glue and as a first layer on the glass jar I used a mix of PVA glue and water and just put a rough coat on. I just let that get slightly tacky and then I applied a second coat of just the glue on its own. So it was quite thick. Now I did have to leave this overnight to dry and what I had to do was every so often I would turn the jar upside down and then I'd put it up the right way again because the glue was slipping down but just by going back to it every so often it helped to coat the full jar. I then put that one to the side and I decided to give my first glass jar one further coat of all the colours and then I basically put both to the side and left them to dry overnight. And you'll see that the top colour of paint there, that kind of green colour, it, it was starting to get that hammered effect and I liked the way that it was starting to, to move down the jar in places. So I made that a really nice thick coat. So I then used the same craft paints as the day before and started to paint on top of the dried PVA glue coating and I have to say the paint went on really nicely and I did two coats, I think it was, of both colours and it seemed to stick really well. And again, as I was painting, I was trying to make the lines kind of wavy, almost seeing these as a bit like the sea, I guess, just a kind of uh, ocean scene. And painted on top of the, the, the previous paint again so that they were overlapping. So both jars are painted and I like the way they're looking but for the craft paint jar I decided to add some Mod Podge and I used the one that has sparkle in it so it's got little bits of glitter and I just thought this would help protect the craft paint on it and because it's got the glitter in it it just adds that little bit of sparkle. So I gave it a very generous 
coat. And here we are. Again, I left them overnight because I wanted the Mod Podge to be nice and dry before I started to, to handle it. So what I want to do is to do a similar effect as I did on my journal jar. I'm using some florist's wire. I've looked out a selection of beads and basically I'm just going to put these around the top of the jar. I have these little fish beads that I got from my friend Cynthia in Oregon and also these little ones that look a bit like fish and they're a kind of coral colour and I thought the coral would add just a nice little pop against the blues and the greens. So I've cut four pieces of the wire, approximately 14-15 inches. I'd already just kind of judged how much I might need to go around the jar and then I'm just going to start stringing some beads on and then what I'll do is, as I did with the journal jar, I will then start to twist a second wire around them and that holds the beads in place. Now it's not essential to do that, if I tied that tight enough they probably would just sit in place but I think just putting the second wire around it gives a nice decorative effect. So once I've got the number of beads on that I want, I then take my second piece of wire and I just start to wrap it around my first wire, just spacing out the beads. And what this second wire does is to then help hold the beads in place so that they're not going to move. Now, I'm not too concerned about the spacing being exact. It's, it's you know, one of these things you could measure out if you wanted, but you know, I just wasn't concerned to do that. So basically I'll work my way along each bead. I want the kind of fish to sit in the middle of it. So you'll see me just going on here, just roughly looking at where things need to sit. And there I have the first string done with my fish in the middle. I wrap it round and then I just pull it tight, wrapping the wires around each other. And I'm liking the way that that's looking. I now take a bigger bead and what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that I've got one end from each wire and they will both go through that bigger bead. And the other two wires I'll just wrap around and in a moment or two what I'll do is I'll just make a nice little loop on it just so that there's no sharp edges sticking out. So both of these now go through that main bead and again this is kind of similar to what I did with the journal jar and of course I will leave links to the journal jar because that would be another way to upcycle a jar just in a slightly different way. So there I am just twisting them in place to make sure that that big bead's going to stay in place and then I just start turning the ends of the wire in. And that will just mean that there's no sharp edge sticking out and it gives a nice little decorative effect. Just pushing it flat there just to make absolutely certain. And then I simply curl the ends up towards the big bead. So if I was sitting this on a shelf or something, I could either have the big bead to the front, middle front, or my little fish that's at the back. Either way, I think, looks good. And these little jars could be used, as I say, for kind of tea lights, or they could be used for keeping cotton wool balls in or little knickknacks around the craft desk or whatever. And here are the finished jars and I'm really quite pleased with them. So of course Nina will have a video this week and I'll leave a link to that below. But I do hope you've enjoyed this upcycling project with two glass jars. So thanks so much for watching. Do take care. Bye for now.